Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Smart Couple Podcast Show. Ask me anything episode. What's going on? Jason Gaddis here. Psyched to hang with you for a moment. Answer a question from an amazing listener. This one's from Natalie in Denver. Okay, uh, just a quick announcement before I answer Natalie's question here. Reminder about a couple things coming up. School is almost beginning. There's a contest going on, a share the love contest right now, and you can win if you play. So you got to be following me on social media and answer the questions. And you can win a shirt, hat, something to spread the love, the message of love in the world. All right, because Lord knows we need it. All right. What else? Oh, September 13th. It's a Wednesday night. My wife and I are giving a talk here in Boulder, Colorado at Shine Restaurant. And it's all about codependency and why codependency is necessary in a long-term relationship. It's going to confront you. It's going to challenge you. You're going to not want to miss this one because there's a lot of bullshit about codependency out there. So we're going to crack that and help you even understand it better and how to play it stronger in your own relationship. So Natalie says... It seems like my husband wants me to change things and that there are things I want him to change. Right? So she wants him to change. He wants her to change. Is that the same thing as wanting him to grow just in different terms? I've heard you say that people can't change their partners, but you have said that your goal should be to grow. I'm wondering what the difference is. So she's wondering what the difference is between changing, growing. Got it. Um, how do you accept that your partner isn't going to change but then strive or agree to grow? All right. This is a complex question because, yes, um, most of the time, if you're wanting your partner to be who you want them to be, that is a trap, and it usually leads to the person feeling judged, criticized, and shutting down, and that's not inspiring. If you've got this voice that's always like, well, I would love you more if, you know, if you stop drinking, if you Um, clean up the dishes this way, if you parented the kids this way, I would love you more if, right? And that's not a great relationship approach. So it is reasonable to ask your partner to change some of their or work on some of their behaviors. And you could say that's asking them to change. So let's say you've got a partner who um, has a tone of voice. Okay, this is an easy one because this is so common. So I sometimes have a tone of voice. It's reasonable for my wife to say, hey, honey, I could hear you better if you lowered your tone of voice or if your tone of voice was less intense. That would feel safer to me um, and better to me. Will you work on that? And I can say, hell yeah, because that's being kind to her. And I can own and take responsibility for that I sometimes have a tone of voice, and that's my responsibility to work on that. If I was yelling and screaming at her, which isn't happening, but if I was, she could still be like, dude, I can't be with you if you're going to continue to yell and scream at me. Um, I'm out of here, unless you change. And that would be reasonable, again, because you're making requests that are based on trying to feel safe and be a team together. So if we're out in the middle of the ocean paddling together in a little dinghy, a little boat, there's things that we can ask each other to do. Hey, I need you to pull your weight here. Um, And is that asking someone to change? Yeah. I need you. There's some water in the boat. Uh, I can't do everything, honey. I can't bail out the water because we have a leak. I can't paddle. I can't also navigate the sail. I can't be the one always looking at the map. And you're over there not doing anything like that doesn't that's not going to be a very successful relationship. So we get to ask our partners to step up and step in and we can challenge them to change, you know, and I think it works better if it's framed in the growth mindset. Like, honey, I think it's going to help our relationship if you work on and frame it like that. If you work on this aspect of yourself. And so another dynamic might be your partner doesn't have a job and you're the one carrying the finances and you're starting to resent them and you've been enabling them for years 
So you could definitely say, honey, I'm tired of our dynamic here where I'm funding our life and you continue to play video games or you continue to, you know, quote, look for a job, but I don't really see you getting out of the house ever. You're just online all the time. Um, it's, you know, it's not really happening and I'm getting really frustrated over here and I need you to uh, work on this stronger. I need you to go see someone. I need you to get more help. I'm willing to fund part of that and let's change this and I want to set a timeline on it. So absolutely we can ask our partner to change in these kind of ways, especially if it's in service of the relationship improving. But if, it, if we're saying I need to, you to fundamentally change as a person, that's not going to that's usually going to get us an argument and uh, more distance. So an example of that might be, let's say you're with a pot smoker and they smoke pot a few days a week and it really bugs you. But it's important to them and it's not really impacting the quality of their life that much. They're able to maintain their job. They're able to maintain friendships. They're, you're able to connect with them emotionally. And you know it's not really impacting their life that much. If you ask that person to stop smoking pot, they're going to feel judged and criticized, and there's going to be a big rift between the two of you because you're fundamentally asking, hey, you value marijuana, I don't, and I'm asking you to stop valuing something that maybe helps you relax or helps you be creative or helps you, however it helps you. You know, if you're checking out all the time, okay, that helps you check out and unwind from a stressful day, like whatever. Uh, when we start to get into that territory, that's when it gets more complicated. So when someone values something a lot and it's important to them and you ask them to not value that thing anymore or do that thing anymore, chances are it's not going to go well. Um, again, the practice here is to practice loving them as they are, right? Usually someone, per, a person like with addiction, let's say, feels ashamed deep down somewhere inside and embarrassed a little bit. And if you ask them, to change, you're, you could say it's shaming them. You're adding more shame on the pile. And what they really need is love. And as Viktor Frankl said and so many other people, when a person feels loved and accepted as they are, then they change. Okay. So many people have said that. That's true in my experience. Um, because they don't, they're not bracing against your criticism all the time. So find out for yourself what works for you. Okay, that's our episode. That's my answer to you, Natalie. I hope that was helpful for you and your guy as you navigate trying to change each other. <laughs> See, the fantasy is if only my partner would blank, our relationship would be great. Um, yeah, and the fundamental one there for me in this podcast is if only my partner would be into growth and development and value it as much as I do, our relationship would be great. Well, that might be true, but I, I think rather than trying to change them, it's probably time for a new partner because that person wants to be loved as they are. They're doing life fine. They're not in enough pain. They don't have the longing that you do, and they don't see the value in growing and developing themselves in this area of their life. So, you know, to get them to do that is sometimes going to be like moving mountains. But if it's important to you, you get to challenge them. Say, uh-uh, we got to go to therapy. We got to listen to this podcast. We got to read this book together. Um, we have to work on this because... Uh, our ship is sinking and I'm bailing out water here and it doesn't feel good and I don't feel safe anymore. So let's deal. Are you with me? Will you be my teammate in this or not? Let's go. You know, we get to challenge and call each other forward like this. Listen to the podcast from Denise and TJ. Okay, their story is a perfect example of this. TJ asked Denise to step up and deal with herself. And Denise rose to the occasion because she's a warrior. She said, okay. Because he said it in a loving way, right? And she was like, okay, got it. And um, the two of them move forward together. Amazing, right? So inspiring. So listen to that podcast if you want further instruction here. Okay, guys, good to hang out with you. Follow me on Instagram stories where there's going to be another question uh, every day until September 5th. Because you could win. And once you win, you get to spread the love, share the love. If you don't, get this free hat, shirt, tank, then you can buy one in our store. 10% off right now until September 5th when school starts. So it's the back to school sale, the micro sale. Okay, check it out. 
Help us spread the message of love, folks. And one way you can do that without buying a damn thing is to learn how. Learn, right? Be that person in your community, in your neighborhood, in your family that's the mature person, please. All right? Okay, let's go. The world needs our hearts right now. Let's give them. Our partners need them. Our future partners need them. We need them. Our kids need them. Let's go. Let's share the love. Okay, talk later.